going live now. Hello, everybody. Welcome Hi. to. Now we're live. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi, Lakota. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey, everyone. How's your mornings going? My morning's waking, waking. So I know Lakota's bright eyed and bushy tailed because uh, she's had a little I, bit of a snooze. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not going to call it bright eyed and bushy tailed because I was out until three o'clock this morning. So I'm probably a little bit less than, less than bright eyed at the moment. Well, good thing it's 4 p.m. for you then. <laughs> yeah, and I've got to do like a massive trek to London. So yeah, I'm Ooh. sleeping on the train as well. How far is it for you? To, to get to the hotel where I've got this conference, probably going to take me about two and a half hours. Oh, yikes. That is a trek. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. I'll just sleep a lot. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. So I'm excited that today we're starting the IDW series of the High Republic yeah. Adventures. So yeah, well, something, yeah. something new. So we're going way back in the timeline to the very beginning of the Great Disaster. So, so yeah, uh, people who are following along, it's going to be like, back in time almost because we've been keeping up and track with everything and now this is just almost restarting our adventure which is pretty cool because now we get to connect some dots because if you've been following along the whole story and you start doing this one it's you're like oh that's that's that person no there's this person or now i finally know what this person looks like it's kind of cool because I, I got to see marcian row and then uh uh, Ram, 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 Jam, whatever his name is, you can see his name, how he looks like. So it's pretty cool to go back and look at all these. So excited. Yeah, so as usual, I'm going to start off with the variant covers. So let me see. Uh, so I'm going to share that screen. And this is from, of course, leagueofcomicgeeks.com website. I could not Which remember it. I was driving me nuts the other day. What is the name of this website? I just could not find it. <laughs> I have it bookmarked. <laughs> yeah, you need to bookmark it or pin it. Yeah. So this is issue number one of Star Wars High Republic Adventures. So it's different because it's called Adventures now in IDW. And the first thing I noticed right away is the artwork is so different on yeah. the covers. And I, I really like it. For this being a, a like a younger child's comic i really like the artwork mm -hmm. so when yeah, i first saw this the whole... lakota yeah, mm -hmm. straight, through, straight through the whole uh, comic you can tell it's it's geared for a younger audience even just by the the, the artwork on it mm -hmm. and so this is the first cover the original cover and it just looks she's beautiful look at her lightsaber they're on this like Tron motorcycle. I'm like, what's going on here? It's it's a lot. Of, it looks very active. Lots of activity. What did you think, John? Uh, the covers or just the style of the artwork? This one in particular. Oh, so yeah. Uh, obviously, just introducing us to these characters. I really, I don't remember seeing the motorcycle, but uh, this is pretty much our core group right here. We're missing the one, and then but uh, I can never remember the name. Missing one more, but we're, this first core group, I love it. Uh, Actually, it's a ton of uh, artwork on this. If you look top to bottom, they spent time drawing all over this thing, so I love it. I did notice the, uh, they're not, maybe because they're powder ones, but they're not as ornate as our other Jedi mm -hmm. or around. It just looks more like a normal lightsaber instead of all gold and all this extra stuff coming off of them. So yeah, it's definitely cool. Yep, so that's the first cover. Here's the a variant cover, and that's a familiar face. We've got a spry looking Master Yoda there. A little bit more hair on top of his head. A little a bit of comb over going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got that little flip. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we see Starlight Beacon in the background, which yeah. is pretty cool. And any comments about this one, Lakota? No, just um, just interesting to see, you know, this is the first time we've seen Yoda in the High Republic. Um, so it's interesting to see from, from me anyway, like, had he, like, was he, did he, was he going to look a lot younger? And I don't think he 
does. I think he's just permanently looks 800 and something years old. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He doesn't look that different. And then the last variant of cover is this one. I like this one. Mm -hmm. It's this nice because it shows style art too, but definitely yeah, very different. But it tells us we this is the introduction to Farzala and Lula, Talazola. So, and it was funny because the artwork sometimes doesn't match. So this looks very detailed, and then other times it looks very cartoonish. Don't you think so? Like in the comic. Well, this is oh, a, I was say, this looks cartoon to me, but I like this cartoon style art. This I could see a show with this kind of cartoon art, and that it would be really yeah. Cool. This animation, yeah. yeah. Cool. It kind of rem reminds me that that style of, of artwork kind of reminds me of the eighties vibe cartoons. Yes, it does. It reminds me of this show that I used to. It was a series that I would play for my fifth graders because it taught the the American Revolution. And it was, um, oh, what was it called? It was, oh, it's right here, actually, I have it. Liberty's Kids, I don't know if you've heard of that. But it was a, a series, and you can see it. That's hard to see, but yeah. it's the same type of artwork. So you can see it. it's, it's small, but. Okay, oops. yeah. Yeah, so it's that type of artwork, but yeah. Good animation. So only three co covers, not too many. For being and issue one, I was surprised. Usually like, issue one, they just like lambast us the covers and you get like 20 covers to get all the issue one. So yeah, Mar Marvel did for sure. <laughs> and so then we have the character introduction. I like that about this website. We've got Bibbs, Crix, Camerat. What a surprise it says rat in his name. <laughs> PZ13, Tromac, Cham Cham. Cham Cham's cute. Cham Cham reminds me of, did you guys watch uh, Speed Racer? Or are you yeah, too was, young? I, you guys I are too young. <laughs> well, he had his little friend Chim Chim, remember? Spritel, the younger brother, had oh, Chim Chim. Yeah. Little, little chimpanzee, well, they have Cham Cham. So. That's fine. <laughs> A lot of little mascots in, in the adventure series, right? Yeah. That's what I've been noticing. Lula Talasola, Quart, Yoda, Farzala, Tarabal, Martian Roe, Torben Buck, and Zine Morala. Torben. So I'm glad they gave us the image of Torben because we get introduced to them a little bit in some of the books. We just call them buckets of blood. I'm like, what does Buckets of Blood look like? <laughs> <I know. laughs> Turns yeah. out he's just a nurse. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really glad I finally can see him. <laughs> so because this is the first issue, it's the first appearance of all these characters. And of course, it's now in this collection, volume one. So it's this been a while. is officially now the earliest version we've ever seen Yoda. Because I don't think there's anything more prequel than this, right? In canon? Yeah. This, this is, is the cool. earliest. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah. I'm loving the fact that there's other characters in here that we didn't even think that are more than a couple hundred years old. We see in our current right. Star, Star Wars stuff. I love that. I don't want to spoil it. For anybody, but at least two other characters. Yes. And then there's other characters that say they're a thousand years old. I was like, oh my God, these characters are probably in that. I was like, this is so cool. I love that. They... In our time, 200 years is generations. In their time, 200 years could be one generation. So I love that. So there's several characters that span the time. I agree. I agree. And I like that it's not too many of them, but it's just enough that it keeps you connected to the same Star Wars universe. Yeah. yeah. So I'm Let's get going right to into switch this. over to the comic. Oh, yikes. Oh, yikes, isn't that right? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Here we go. So issue one. We talked a little bit about the cover already. Like that. And it starts out with that new timeline, which we're all familiar with. Yeah, it's in yeah. all the comics. Mm -hmm. And I like that that game is coming out. It's going, it's, what's that new game? The, the Old Republic's coming back, right? Yeah. So oh, it's gonna yeah, they're gonna remake it for 
PS3, I think, or PS5, mm -hmm. whatever it's called. Yeah, and the, that means the timeline's going to extend even farther back. So if they're remaking it, they're going to make it canon then, huh? Well, yes. That's and what I, told my, cool. what I told my nephew last night is that it's not that they're remaking canon, it's the legacy stuff. They're finally identifying what of the, what of the, not legacy, the, um, um, oh my gosh, I said this evening last night. Um, legends. What it, legends, what parts of the legends are true and what parts are not, so. Yeah. So, uh, uh, that whole game, we're gonna get off the tangent right here, but the whole game, uh, I wonder if the whole game is being remade shot for shot or if they're gonna redo it with some things that they would rather have in it. Kind of like how they I think it's gonna, I, I, I think it's gonna be brand new, a brand new game. So I'm excited. I'm excited too. Hopefully it still has the same twist because that was the best part of it. <laughs> Spoiler alert. I can say that. <laughs> I know it's old. <laughs> Star Wars The High Republic. We've got the crawl that we're familiar with. The galaxy is at peace, ruled by the glorious Republic. Of course, because this is before the great disaster and protected by the noble and wise Jedi Knights. As a symbol of all that is good, the Republic is about to launch Starlight Beacon. So it hasn't even launched yet into the far reaches of the outer rim. This new space station will serve as a ray of hope for all to see. But just as a magnificent renaissance spreads throughout the Republic, so does a frightening new adversary. Now the guardians of peace and justice must face a threat to themselves, the galaxy, and the force itself. Dun, dun, dun. And so one thing uh, I kind of like that these all have this page you're looking at right now. It kind of gives us almost a little teaser. And yes. Marvel didn't have it. The IDW has it. So I really like that it does this. Yeah, and there's the other page I like too. The one that gives like a little uh, archive file. Oh, that like halfway in the middle? When yeah. You get to that, that's like, that's like my favorite thing about this. <laughs> <laughs> I love those too. I love, I love those. Them. <laughs> so here we see. Smack. Yeah. <laughs> so this one's called Collision Course. And we see two faces. And it starts out right away. We know what's happening here. This, of course, is the great disaster. And we see a then dud. I didn't know what the great disaster was. It was a ship that gets destroyed in hyperspace. And pretty much now, once it does, it just launches debris anywhere it wants anywhere in the galaxy and so it's just it causes a lot of devastation i think billions die or at least millions i know one system, entire system is destroyed so yeah it's a big one it's a big one and they come out whenever it's not like it's it was uh, in the beginning i like couldn't happen but there's some that came out weeks later some debris so it's mm. kind of like they had to shut down all hyperspace for a while so pretty much the worst disaster you can ever think of so here we have a Doug. We know that species from the prequel. Boba. <laughs> and then they're saying, what's going on? Yeah, they're at like a station and they notice the ish hit the fan right here. Where they're going to get smashed and destroyed. Mm -hmm. And then we jump over to the Starhopper, which is that ship that Yoda's on with the younglings, because he's taking a break from the Jedi Council, right? Yeah, so apparently Joda, yeah, Joda, Yoda is, uh, <laughs> he's just taking a bunch of younglings. It's not even the couple we're going around with. There's other ones on the ship, too, so it's pretty cool. And he's, I guess he's just like a field trip, an extended field trip. And I know some of these younglings, uh, Padawans, have a uh, master, so I don't know if they all do, but he's still just traveling all around the galaxy with them and he does look a little younger here he's uh decided to go full crew cut like he's no hair at all yeah but i yeah. definitely yoda is a i realize yoda is a a tool that star wars put out there it's like how do we get people to read this one and yeah. like, yoda in it and people are going to definitely like the younger audience is going to be way more like oh, i'm going to read about yoda so it's pretty cool yeah, he's definitely yeah, being used as a hook, isn't he? It's like get people interested in it, get them wanting to read it. But it's a, it's a great way to get kids into Star Wars, you know? 
or getting right. into the comments. Not about him at all. Name. He's really just there. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. He's real smart. Yeah. And you're right. Some of these do have uh, masters. I think the older ones, but the really young ones don't. I don't think the really young ones do. Yeah, I, it's, it's weird because usually you're not going to see Padawans away from the master. So I kind of thought that was a little different. I was like, oh, he's just uh, taking the wall for a field trip. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so they're out in the Star Hopper, out in hyperspace, which of course had that disaster. And the little blue boxes are, are Lula Talazola, like her little mental monologue. And we're listening to what she's thinking about while all these things are going on. It's pretty cool. So she's a super gifted uh, Padawan. And then I like Quart because he never talks. I mean, he talks a lot, but you never know what he's saying. Yeah, uh, it's going to be like a, a rock friend. It's just like, you just have to assume what he's saying. You don't know what really is going on. So I like, it's a nice little uh, fun little thing they're doing. He always says something, it just never makes sense. Are <laughs> you in resistance? Who was in resistance? You know the the he's, he was like the little engineer friend. He looks similar. I was just wondering if they were the same species. Well, because now I know. Spoiler alert that he's wearing. Can I say it? It's a spoiler, but because I just found out an issue nine of I. Uh, I'm read issue nine. <laughs> I know. Okay, then I won't say anything. <laughs> I won't say anything. <laughs> read up to I eight. I read nine. Okay. Then I, I won't say anything. I mean, he could be. I don't. I'd have to rewatch. I'll have to rewatch. More like the engineer on Star Trek is what he looks like. Yes, <laughs> that's what I thought too. The engineer on Star Trek, he looks yeah. just like him. <laughs> the Niku that, was the character I was thinking of. Niku, because the one on Star Trek yeah. has little. He's got little crab eyes, right? They move like this. Do, 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 do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. And then here we have a. Uh, Relinac City on Trimant 4. And we have another similar parallel story going on with Zine Morala, where she's on her planet. Zine's and the pink one with the crazy hair. She's cool. Yeah, she is cool. And she's there with the rat. Crix, which I thought was, I, can't, I cannot get the curse words right. I thought Crix was one of the curse words. When they said Crix, I was like, wait, Crix. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> what, is the, what is the curse word? Is it? Kerf or? Criff. Criff. Criff, yeah. yes. Criff. Yeah. Real similar to Crix. <laughs> so, and we find out that on this uh, planet, they're like part of this very ancient tribe where they don't like Jedi powers. It's a very interesting society it's it's not a, yeah they're very against the force and mm -hmm. they're they don't have the traditional parents it's like you get raised by the elders so it's very interesting uh society they have there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden we see these things falling on their village and we know of course it's the fallout from the great disaster and they're like what's going on all this stuff is happening and simultaneously, they're having a big meeting with their, I guess it's the shaman, the leader of their cult or yeah. tribe. I kind of got cult vibes too. Yeah, I did. <laughs> you never said that, but I kind of got cult vibes too. How about you, Lakota? Did you get that feeling? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. But it's all a bit, um, you know, stick them all on a ship somewhere and indoctrinate them. Yeah. yeah. So then they're like, okay, entering the TriMet system in 10. So, like, we got to go help. Padawans get ready. This is a great shot because you see all these different Padawans and younglings. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Like, we don't follow, we don't know any of these names. We don't, we only follow like three that are in here. So, it's really cool that there's all these are with them. You just see this giant scope of what's going on. Mm hmm. So they're saying it's another delayed fallout reaction from the hyperspace disaster. So like you were saying, Jonathan, it didn't oh, all, all the debris delayed. didn't fall out at once. This is a, no. another delayed one. So they're going to go to the rescue because that's what the Jedi do. And then they're going to Brelinac City. 
Yeah, so Yoda, really uh, Yoda's starting to look a little bit younger here. <laughs> the, yeah. He's kind of looking middle-aged. Like he looks like he's in his 30s. Yeah, he has a waist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look at his look at his tummy. He's nice and slim. <laughs> and then Yoda's like giving trainings. So he's it's it's cool because it's different type of training that we never heard Yoda give uh, younglings. So it's mm -hmm. expanding our knowledge of how the force is how the Jedi transmit their knowledge. Well, I was surprised that they did this because obviously he's on like a field trip type with all these youngs to kind of teach him. They even say like one of the other comics, we're just going around to learn. But to drop all these young children on a planet that isn't something that can even fight, it's just but you're gonna it's gonna be rolling the dice whether or not you survive because something could land on you at any moment. Kind of surprising. Shows to me how desperate they really are at this time, how thin the Jedi are. Let's use these children, these trainees, to go try and save people on a planet that's just getting bombarded. It's like a little yeah. surprising that they did that. It does show well, how I, desperate I, they are. I thought it was more like the, how much faith they have in the Force that because these children are, are strong in the Force, that it's just going to work together by having them you know, all together is, is more force. That's I don't know, a, but good idea. I don't really think of that. I just thought it was because they're they're kind of fatalistic, aren't they? The Jedi are at this point they're very they think everything's destined to be and, and everything is going to be as the force wills it. Yeah, and... I think they're definitely like that, but I still think you want to be cautious. <laughs> That's me, I guess. I'm a very cautious person. I am too, but I think they're like, oh. Some are going to die. It's That's just happen. the will of the force. It's going to happen. So let's get out there. Some won't. You know? Might as well try and save some people. <laughs> so then we see them coming down. It's going to be a, a, a meeting of our Jedi friends. So we're back on the city. And oh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming down. Yeah. Let's introduce to that really cool ship that I don't know if you've even given a name yet, but uh, I haven't seen read about it in any of the comics. I mean, any of the books or anything. So it's cool that we get to get it here. This spider ship. I love that spider ship. It looks really cool. And then they're like, "What's going on?" And and she's got her little friend, Cham Cham. It's got like a little bat nose, little bat ears. It's cute. So here we see the ship. I like this image of the ship descending through the clouds. Yeah. Through the smoke. They actually think it's there to save them too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like that shot right there, that just seems so dangerous to put kids. Hey kids, go drive these through this. <laughs> this meteor shower, yeah. yeah. But there it goes, There's like the bat car. Batmobile, right? Yeah. <laughs> it looks yeah. cool. And so we have that spider ship coming in. We've got the Jedi coming in also. And they're all descending on Relinex City. And they're like, hey, what's going on? These kids are out in the wilderness, not knowing that they're in danger. And then we get our first look at the Nihil. And the Nihil. Realize. They've been protected. So, sorry, Jonathan, gone. I was just saying, this is exactly what we've been showed what they look like. So really no surprises how they look like. It's kind of what I expected. Mm -hmm. I think they, I personally think they look less scary. Oh, really? Yeah. Compared to the artwork in the um, other comics. I think they just look a little bit less intimidating. That's true. Well, I think because at this point we weren't, because when I first read this, I didn't know that they were bad. Mm. So I, I thought there were just, oh, it's just, you know. Maybe just mercenaries or something. Yeah, they've got masks. Yeah, it just didn't feel, it's, it wasn't, it's not as, um, as quite as Mad Maxi or, or kind of, you know. Yes, you're right. It's not intimidating, but I think it was purposeful for this issue. Yeah. So that we would get that twist. Well, definitely their posture, uh, what they're, what, how you were interacting. We meet them as kind of they're more acting like guards right now, and mm -hmm. that's not yeah. Nihil from what we've read so far. Nihil is just attacking marauders, so it's Pl just, plundering. It's yeah. a little different when you. Re I'm reading them at first. I was like, 
Are they, are they higher than nine hill? I was like, this is different, definitely different than what I expected them to act. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we and we find out they have the elder, Elder Cromack, and they're taking him away. And then Crix and her name is Zine, right? Yeah, Zine. And they're yeah. like, hey, let's hurry up. Let's go over with the with well, the yeah, ship. You gotta try and board it. So they try and board it, and they're told no by one of the guards. It's kind of where I got is definitely like, huh? Yeah. And then they're like, this evacuation isn't for you. But this one looks kind of scary though. Okay. At Can the bottom. we remember if uh, the Nihil were able, they were able to pre pre predict the emergencies, right? They, yeah, they caused they it, to... yeah. So they were able to predict it later on because that's why they went to go blackmail that one system, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they were, they got there. Maybe they messaged him before time and said, hey, you're going to be bombarded talking to the elder. And, uh, so they want some. They don't want money from the elder. They want information. I remember now. I don't know if we find right. it comic, but later on, it's, it's they yeah. have a reason for saving him. Well, because Martian's looking for something. Remember, he's yeah. he's collecting things, and we don't know it at the time, but that's what's going on. Uh, but yeah, you're right. They they have that. What's her name? Mary, Mary. Um, Senteca. Yeah. Sen Senteca, yeah. Senteca, right? Mm -hmm. And she's. To me, it's like she has she's force sensitive because she can predict things or see or she can give she can them the see, she can see the lines, can't she? Yeah, she's she definitely can do, got force powers. She's a skywalker in the sense of navigating through yeah. hyperspace, right? Yeah, yeah, she can see the hyperspace lines. Mm -hmm. And then these are the galactic data files. I love these. Yeah. Because this is the first time I found out where the Starlight Beacon was relative I mean, to the It's really the cool. We get a map. It's not yeah. so much detail. Like, this is a map. Like, this is so, so much. And what's cool, too, is the Hetzel system is right by Tatooine. Oh, yeah. yeah. They don't really tell you which one's what. Are they both in that red circle? But I'm assuming they're just right next to each other. So very cool. That cell is the first one, right? The first one that got the emergencies. Yeah. Yes, that's where the originally the original disaster happened in the Hetzel system. But here's Trimont, so Trimont far away. Pretty far, and so they got some stuff all the way over there, huh? So I'm wondering how the hyperspace lanes work. It must be it, it, maybe it's like Doctor Strange when he does those swirls. You can pull I have up lots, anywhere. And lots of no. questions about the hyperspace. And I was kind of <laughs> waiting till maybe they were done with all these books, but I still don't understand how they, how they their paths. And I just, yeah, I have a lot of questions about those. <laughs> <laughs> and I like how they, they give us some familiar stuff like Yavin, Kashyyyk, yeah. you know, the core Coruscant. But then they also mix in some of the new stuff. Like we have Trimont, Starlight Beacon, Hetzel System. And same thing with the little pictures. We have Starlight Beacon, and then we have Coruscant, which of course we're very familiar with, and then Trimont. So it's, I like this. And then it goes back to the story. And she's giving some little background, a little flashback of when she was really young. She still had Cham Cham. And then it's getting worse. Kind of building the bond with her and Crix, which is pretty much the, the third person we follow along these comics. So, mm -hmm. and then the Jedi are arrived and they're going to help them. And they're that's what I'm saying. This looks dangerous, man. Like, it does, it looks yeah. super dangerous. I mean, this is kind of where we're learning how good Lula is, too. And we, we follow along with her through the whole comic books, and even in the one book she lands in, uh, you really realize how talented she is. And okay. Yeah, well, she did state at the beginning that she scored really high in all her exams, so mm -hmm. she's very talented. I love that. <laughs> I read. 
Oh, what is that book that she's in? Race to Crash Point. Yeah. First, even though I was like, I maybe should have read this first. But I read that first and I learned all the stuff about her. And I'm going back and I'm like, oh, this is Lula. So I was like, and I didn't like, there's things in the race where she says she's jealous and stuff. I'm like, uh, and now I'm finding out why. So it's kind of cool that I'm going back and learning more about her. Because I, I didn't know who Lula or Zine or any of these were when I'm reading Crash Point. So I'm going back and it's kind of, it's like a prequel story for me more. Yeah. See, I did read the comics first. And so that when I read it, I was, I knew who they were. So it was exciting for me to, to see them again. And then we see that spider ship is pretty cool. It's like a big spider. Definitely instills fear, which I think the reason that they have yeah. to be functional. But uh, I love that. It does a good job at scaring people. And then they're not letting them come through because they only came for the, their leader. And he, of course, says, oh, I need them. They're my disciples. I don't catch, to... understand why he, all of a sudden he's like, yeah, let's bring them on. He just like doesn't want them to kill the kids. But all of a sudden he like really wants them to come along. Yeah, he wants to rescue them because they're going to get killed. They should have Otherwise, done that first. <laughs> well, they were like capturing him. Remember, it wasn't that he was trying to evacuate. Uh, they went and they grabbed him, and he's like, "Wait a minute!" And so then he tells take them, "Whatever he can to save." Yeah, I think so. I got it as when I, we first kind of introduced him that he was making a backdoor like evil deal, kind of like yeah. Oh they, no, I thought they went to. They, I think they went to kidnap him. That's the feeling I got. What do you? What about you, Lakota? Yeah, I think they were taking him. Mm -hmm. Definitely thought they were taking him. And then so we have the Jedi show up as well. And they're like, no, you can't use our ship. And Yeah, the Jedi aren't even there. Like, what are you there for? They're like, oh, we're going to need your ship to save people. <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> they're kind of just like, we need that. And this is where we find out that they have no love for the Jedi, the people of Trimont. Yeah. They're like Jedi, Force users. It's just interesting because they never really tell us why. Why there's, it's, I understand that they do hate Force users. Uh, it's, it's hard to get behind a reason to why people hate anyone without a reason why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh. So here they are, they, they start getting, they're under attack by the Nihil. And of course, it's not always successful against Jedi. So they're not doing a very good job of exterminating them. So I noticed throughout the comic series, whenever there's a bunch of people, the artwork, I don't know if it's intentional, gets less detailed. Yeah. And so maybe they're like, this is too much work. I'm not going to do it all. Or if it's, maybe it's just something they normally do in comics like this. But uh, there's some issues later where there's a bunch of them. And it's just kind of like, almost like squiggly lines are supposed to be the people. I'm like, I can't even make anything out. Kind of like the couple <laughs> of panels here, I'm kind of getting that too. They're kind of like, oh, it's just, I think it's a style they do, honestly. But yeah. It's a little, uh, catches me off guard. Like I like it. I, I like it because it gives me that scope of like, oh, this is big, you know. And you really, when you have a big, massive scene like that, you can't see all the details. Yeah, I don't your think it's almost like a limited. focus thing. You know, if something's far away, it's not mm -hmm. focused. So I'm thinking like that scene where they're walking them up the stairs. They're really, it's almost just like the outline of them. I'm like, is that supposed to say we're mm -hmm. not focused? So it's kind of, it's a different tool, and I see how they do it. But it caught me off guard when I first started reading it. Mm -hmm. You see, you can, you can catch it. You can see Yoda hiding. It looks like Yoda. Uh, one, two, three, four. Fourth panel down, like next to the stairs. It almost looks like. Remember, Yoda is trying to. Oh up. yeah. So it yeah. kind of looks like Yoda hiding there, but because there's no detail, it's hard to tell. <laughs> right here, huh? At yeah. the base of the stairs, I hadn't noticed that. I did notice they have the leader. He's up there. I recognize yeah. him. But yeah, Yoda's down there. Yeah, so sneaking. He's sneaking. He should be hiding under like a little trash can, like a little bucket, and <laughs> moving around. <laughs> so here we have these parallel stories that are now clashing together because we have Lula's story and we also have uh, Zine's story. They finally merged. Yeah, they even the same. Their, their thought bubble bubbled together. It's blue and 
think at the same time. So it's kind of, you know, that we're following them at the same time. It's pretty cool. Right. And then this is where we see something's coming down. They're both, something's happening because they're merging. The mm. blue and the pink, the blue and the pink. And it's, I think the force is building on everyone who's around because the force grows stronger as there's more force sensitives together. And here we have the big reveal that she also uses the force. It's pretty uh, impressive too. Yeah, yeah, it is. It makes me think she has a lot of force power that's maybe untapped too, that especially well, that we're following her, following along with her, that maybe there's even some more really cool moments from her. And she hasn't received any training. Yeah. No. And it's of course, very Eleven, like just like yeah <laughs> and then Crix is like what the what the frick <laughs> <laughs> and even the Jedi are like whoa you know how did this person do all this and Crix is like Zine you and she's like I can't hold it and then the Jedi come over Lula comes over hold on we got you and they're all doing it together. And Crix is like, no way. So He's like pissed off. So angry. That red background, just the emotion is just like, not even that. It's just anger. It's not upset. It's, it's so much more. He's so angry right there. Well, he, he's, he's so betrayed. He feels betrayed. And then the, uh, the leader grabs him. He's like, "Come with me. Come with me, child." Yeah. That's where we see. Uh, I still don't know. Is it Marcion or Marcion? That's where we see Marcion real. And for uh, the first time, yep, yeah. he's all kill them all. And he's actually first. He's bigger than I thought. I thought he was a little more slender, and they kind of make him in these. I know it's a little more youth-inspired comic, but they make make him look a little. They want him to look a little more menacing. And I never really got the, when I read the book, I never thought it was really menacing looking, but uh, it can definitely make him look big here. Mm. But I think it's all like smoke and mirrors, you know, very Wizard of Oz, because he's, he wants to project this image, but he's, he's not a big, scary guy. He's, he's a little guy, right? He wants to be slender. I know that, that, I mean, he's not tiny, but he's supposed to be kind of just an average size. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we get to the end, it's to be continued, so. They're all surrounded, our heroes. Yep. Our quartet. But yeah, uh, so I, this is the first time I ever read anything IDW. Uh, enjoyed it, obviously, it was a really good read. I, I picked it up and I read like first seven or eight like that. So I had to read it all and uh, Definitely enjoy it so far. If you guys haven't got onto it, I definitely think you should start reading it. And they're releasing this month the first uh, book, which is like the first five issues. It's on Amazon. You can get it. I think it's this month. Maybe it's next month, but it's going to be out pretty within a month. You're going to be able to get the first five issues like on one of those, the books with all together. In volume one, yep. Yeah. So what did you think? I thought, yeah, I think it's a really good, fun, quick read. Um, I mean, you can, it's definitely, if you're, uh, if you're not taking it through with kids or anything, I think it's definitely worth getting a few episodes or a few issues in one go. Because um, I, I, there's su such a small little story in there. I had to go back a couple of times to go, remind me what happened in that little snapshot. Because it is literally just a little snapshot. But I think it's a really good, fun read. It'll be interesting to see what happens next. Well, yeah, yeah, I agree. The next four issues are just micro things that they put together to make a, really yeah. the, the base of this this comic issue. Not too yeah. much happens like time wise, but a lot of happens in these next like four issues. So it's like you gotta keep up. But then it's just like, all right, here's your here's your story. We laid it down. It's gonna be these characters, and you're gonna follow the situation between these three, and it's just really good. And I th really think uh, Marcion and Yoda, they're just to get you start reading. Um, maybe they 
we have some cool stuff with them later, but I do know they, they kind of fade out later on, but definitely a cool to get us going. They do fade out, but they also come back in. So I have a feeling they do come back in because I haven't got to nine. I don't know if they come back in at nine yet, but I think because they mentioned that stuff like, oh, he's still missing and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll get to that later. <laughs> but it also shows up in I, at least one of the books, right, Lakota? Yeah. There's one of the books where Yoda's on Martian's ship. Isn't what? it? Lakota? Or I read, I, I've read everything. I'm halfway done through Tempest Runner. And I don't think. No? I'm getting confused because I'm reading too many it things at once. It doesn't ring a bell. Honest, it doesn't ring a bell. There is. There's one. Well, I I I'm, try, I'm trying not comic, to be spoilery, but. I think the next comic, you see something like that. Is that when Yoda's on the ship in the comic? Yeah. Okay, then that's right. He's trying to save Zine, not Zine. Right. Crix, and he gives him the little communicator. That's right. Mm, That's right. That's right. Okay, then it's not one of the books. (laughs) No, it's not in the book. It's a comic. (laughs) I just haven't read it in so long, so I read these right when they came out. But that's really cool that you can read the comics and still a cohesive story that you you're actually misinterpret remembering a comic as literature. Like this is part of the story, so it's really cool that it's all one story that's mixing together. Yeah, yeah, I do like that. It's very cohesive. Yeah. And so, two weeks from now, we'll go to part two of the story in the next issue. Mm-hmm. I do like this artwork because she doesn't look like a child in this picture. They uh, age him real quick towards the end of the series. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> He's at the beginning of this, she looks like a little girl, right? Well, she is, but I think I remember from the one book she's in, Crash Point, she's probably like 16, right? Because I remember she's talking, when she's talking to, oh, the Jedi Knight that's young. She's one of my favorite ones, uh, Vern, Vern. And she was like, oh, yeah, Vern Estro like, Rowe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. She's like, "What? How's she a Jedi? She's like the same age as me. She looks so young." So, yeah. Assuming she's around the fifteen to seventeen range, mm. but they do make her, especially at the beginning of this one, they make don't make her look like that. She looks. She looks like a like, a uh, like adolescent. Yeah. At the beginning, and here she looks like a teenager. So it's like, ooh. all right. So. Any other final thoughts for- on this? We're good? I think I liked it. It's really good. I mean, I've already read all the books up through nine, so I'm really excited. It's good. I have nine as, I don't know if you guys saw. Did you guys, I have a nine as the uh, variant issue from New York Comic Con. So I don't want to oh, open cool. it. I don't want to read it. So I need nine, the original version from. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. I gotcha. So I'm not. I don't want to open it yet. So I, I put the <laughs> unboxing on our YouTube channel. You can see the two uh, issues of the Com- New York Comic Con. I got the Monster cool. Temple variant and the Adventures variant. Nice. But I haven't read either of those because I don't have them yet. They're they're reading version. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call it when you have a uh, you buy collectibles and one's open, one stays in the box and one you open? It's called like. Is it loose or display? I don't know because I open everything. Does yeah, I'm an unboxer. This is for I'm an unboxer. everything gets opened. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Team Lakota. <laughs> Let's open everything. <laughs> <laughs> Only open the helmets and lightsabers. The figures are never get open. <laughs> oh, I play with them. I've never ever opened any of the figures. I but play with them the like... Legos. I'm like, why do I keep the Legos sealed? It's... I just have any problem. <laughs> oh, I put my Legos together. <laughs> yeah, what if I don't know why what I if, the Legos. John, what if there's a piece missing? You won't know unless you build it. <laughs> it's it's all in the box. <laughs> <laughs> but that, yeah, no, the whole point of Lego for me is to build it and enjoy it and go, wow, that's really cool. And then put it away again. I know, it's just something <laughs> bad, something's wrong. <laughs> all right, so I'll see you guys all in two weeks for issue number two part two of this introductory story thanks very much mike thanks for joining us today morning guys thanks guys have a good one everybody